Hello, I'm Martin Evening, and in this video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use the new whites and black slider adjustments that are available for the localized adjustment tools in this latest version of Lightroom CC, also known as Lightroom 6.1. And the controls I'm referring to are available here when you select either the adjustment brush. You can see that you'll now find that there are whites and black sliders that have been added, also available as a radial filter adjustment and also using a graduated filter. So before I show you how to use this in practice, let's just recap on working with the whites, blacks, and the highlights and the shadow sliders in the basic panel. And the best way for me to do this is to select a gradient image you can see here, which goes from a midtone gradient to black. So let's start by looking at adjusting the black slider. As I take the black slider down across to the left, you can see that this increases the black clipping point and has the effect of raising the black clipping point and making everything for this tone and darker go completely black. And you'll notice at the same time as I take the blacks down that it also moves all the other tones up as well as we do that. And as I drag across in the other direction, you can see that it shifts the tones down this time as I increase the blacks value. And then if I reset that, so let's now drag the shadow slider over to the left and you'll see that as I take the shadows over more to the left, this does also have the effect of increasing the black clipping point, um, but it doesn't actually um, distort the shadows tones quite so much. What it does is it actually compresses the shadows more together so that when you're editing an image, you can compress the shadow tones together to make them appear darker, but without having too much effect on the mid tone to the highlight tones. And then as I drag the shadow slider in the other way, it expands the shadow tones. It don't, can't do anything about the black point down here, which has already been clipped to black, but it does have the effect of lightening up the shadows by expanding those tones, but without having too much effect on the mid-tone to the high, highlight tone values. But interestingly, if I start adjusting the other sliders, like the highlight slider, although this is mainly designed to work on the highlight tones, it does have some effect on the mid-tones but doesn't have any effect on the shadow tones down here in this region. And then as I drag the highlights slider in the other way, other direction, it will lighten up the highlight tones and it will also have some effect on the mid tones as well, but not so much on the, on the darkest tones. So let me just reset that and uh, then go to the next image, which shows a white value, a pure white to a mid tone value. If I adjust the highlight slider, this time dragging to the left, you can see that it compresses the highlight tones. It won't do anything to change the value here for this tone because it's already been clipped at 255, but all the other tones below it get uh, compressed together so that this can be used as an adjustment to bring out more highlight detail by darkening the highlights. And as I drag in the other direction, this will have an effect on the clipping point for the whites but what it does is it has the effect of expanding the highlight tones so that you can use it as a way to deliberately lighten an image. And then if I drag the white slider, as I drag the white slider across to the left, I can darken down the image just the same as I can with the highlight slider so that it does have an effect of compressing the tones, but the effect is that much more dramatic because it's trying to raise the uh, clipping point up further and moving all the tones up in that direction. So that's why it produces a more pronounced and stronger effect. And then if I drag the white slider in the other direction, you can see that it has a very dramatic effect of actually increasing the amount of highlight clipping so that this tone here, which was a light gray originally, is now become a pure white clipped value. So that shows you a brief summary of uh, what the highlight shadows, whites and black sliders are doing and how the a uh, difference between the highlights and the whites and the shadows and blacks is quite subtly different. And it's important to bear that in mind when you apply those adjustments when using the localized adjustment tools using the new whites and black sliders. So let me now show you a practical example of how we can use the whites and blacks adjustment. If I select the adjustment brush here, let me set the sliders up here so that I can apply a darkening whites adjustment. And I just want to check to make sure that I've also got the auto mask option checked down here, which I have. And then if I click on the image, I can then just 
start to paint to just darken down the highlights in the chrome on this uh, image. So you can see that using the whites adjustment here that I can actually make the chrome slightly darker and I just want to keep that hot spot in there in the, in the middle so I can keep that shine on the chrome so it doesn't look too unnatural and the same thing needs to be done here as well. So by using that adjustment and if I show you the before and after by clicking down here you can see that's without and that's with showing you the localized adjustment that I applied using the whites slider as a set to minus uh, 50. So what about localized blacks adjustments? Well, I can show you an example of where that might be useful by selecting this image here. This is a photograph that was taken on a foggy winter's morning. And with the adjustment brush still selected over here, if I reset the white slider and set the blacks to a negative value, in this case, minus 49, I can paint on top of this image to increase the contrast between these trees and the background. And I'll just show you that I have or should have the auto mask option still selected down here at the bottom. So if I click on the tree trunk and start painting, you can see that this starts to make the trunk and the branches go darker as I paint around. And by using the blacks adjustment instead of a negative shadows uh, adjustment, it means that I can apply more contrast more aggressively than if I just use the negative shadows on its own. So in this case, the negative blacks is applying a very sort of strong black adjustment, darkening those uh, branches. And I can do the same for this trunk and these branches over here as well. So there we have the finished example. And if I scroll down here, I can show you a before and after you can see, see that's without the effect and that's with the adjustment applied. And another example of why you might find this useful, uh, I can show here on this particular image that was uh, taken of a seascape where perhaps I might like to increase the contrast in the clouds up here. If I select the graduated filter tool and add a graduated filter adjustment at the top, I can play around with the exposure by combining perhaps a negative exposure, play around with the highlights to compensate against that, and then play around with the white slider as well. And you'll notice how by, in this case, applying a negative highlights adjustment with a negative exposure adjustment, and then using the white slider, I can bring more contrast into those clouds so that if I show you the effect of the before and after, there's the before version and there's the after. What I've managed to do is make use of the fact that I have now three controls here that can be used to manipulate the mid-tone to highlight tones. And actually there's another one as well that you can use, which is the clarity. That will also <coughs> add more mid-tone contrast. So there's quite a lot of versatile tools now. Having the white slider in there can be incredibly uh, useful for landscape images. And I found myself using this on quite a lot of uh, cloudscapes for being able to, as I say, manipulate the contrast in an image. So a lot to go and play around with using whites and blacks as a localized adjustment now working in Lightroom CC.